Speaking of public art, even the rain couldn't dampen the spirits here at Somerville's fourth sculpture in the South. We knew we wanted to have quality work and, uh, and we wanted to see if we could let people understand how wonderful sculpture is, make it easy for them, let it be approachable, and then when and if we had the ability to place public sculpture, to have it be sculpture that they could touch for the most part, so that people that might never step into an art gallery or museum would be able to be up close and it would belong to them. The first piece is a piece called Hop To It, and it's a 53-inch frog. It's a bronze by a sculptor named Kim Shackley. We make it a point to pick artwork only from the artists who have come here to be in the show. She took pictures of the frog and the park and submitted them to us, and um, we thought it was a great idea and, and managed to raise the funds um, for it. That same edition was put in the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington, so it's it's got, it's in good company, but we think Ours has the better view. <laughs> um, the next piece we got, actually we didn't even have to buy. We, um, someone that is in the visitor center and it's a chamber of commerce, a woman named Joanne Brooks, was trying to find a way to remember her husband in a positive way. He had died after a long illness. And, um, and then she told me a story about a dog that came to visit them. They were cat people, they didn't even like dogs. And um, dog came to visit them every day. They'd never seen it before and it stayed. And the sicker her husband got, the more the dog stayed and really became a constant companion to him. And when he died, about eight months after the dog first arrived, the dog disappeared. And she just thought, well, you know, he just misses my husband, he's gone. And then about three days after the funeral, she came home from work and the dog was there at her house and she let him in and fed him and let him out the next morning and he walked around the house one time and walked out to the street, turned around and sat down and looked at her and then disappeared and never came back. And it was a yellow lab. It's a great gift um, to the community. The first weekend it was put in, um, the Flower of Town Festival occurred and of course thousands and thousands of people come to it and the patina was worn off the head that first weekend by people touching it. And some people were worried, oh my gosh, you know, the color is gone. I said, no, that's what we want. That's success to us. It means people are comfortable enough to touch that dog. The third piece, and, and I guess we call it a piece, it's got um, six pieces to it, five life-size children and a dog, are part of a thing called Follow the Leader by a Florida sculptor, Sandy Proctor. And um, Sandy Proctor is actually the one that did the dog as well. The artist made an arrangement with us and allowed us, because he knew we wanted the, the, all the artwork to be touchable, to not sell us the bronze logs that the children are normally placed on. We placed them on a low brick wall so that children can climb up and touch the sculpture. I mean, they'll put their arms around it, um, hug it, pat the hands. Climb on it. Climb on it. Actually, no matter what your disability, this is the only art form that if you're allowed to touch sculpture that everybody can enjoy. If you're hearing impaired or sight impaired or emotionally impaired, mentally impaired, physically impaired, if you can still get to it, then it's an art form you can appreciate and enjoy. And, and um, that's one of the reasons it's here.